Okay, this is my second video tutorial on working with layers in Photoshop. And in this tutorial, what we're going to do is something that a lot of people end up doing with their images in Photoshop, and that is you've got two images, and you've got this image right here, okay? You can see it, background right here. And then I've got another image open here, and I can, obviously, I can switch between these images like this, right? Also, what I can do is I can click this button, and I can float all of the images in the windows, or I can do multiple panes. I could do it like that. And now I've got the images in multiple windows here. I put that one over here. So now I've got this image over here, and I've got this image over here. And each one of these images, depending on which one I've selected, has um, has just one layer. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this uh, this buffalo image onto this other image. So what I'm going to do is get my move tool here and I'm just going to click and drag and drag it over here and drop it. And here we go. Come on. There we go. Now you can see the plus sign. I'm going to let go of the mouse and now I've dropped this image right here onto this image. Now I'm going to go back into a single screen view and you'll see that now I dragged and dropped this image on top of the other one and you can see it there on a second layer. It's on top of the other layer. And if I want I can drag that over here and then you can see that I've got the background layer underneath and on top I've got this uh, buffalo, right? And so we can drag and drop images or we can copy and paste images. Let's try that one. Okay, so I'll delete that layer. I'll go back to the buffalo image. Where is it? There it is. And what I could do is, is I could make a selection. So I'll get this lasso tool here. And I'm going to draw a lasso around the buffalo. Let go and closes the selection. And then I'll do an edit, copy. And I'll go to my other image and I'll do an edit paste and you'll see that the buffalo pastes on a secondary layer right on top of the other image and this is the way a lot of people use Photoshop to manipulate images and move people's faces around from body to body or add people to an image or add them to a background or generally play with Photoshop. Now that I have this buffalo on this layer, I'm going to turn off the eyeball on the background layer so you can see that it was a copy paste and it pasted on a layer and the checkerboard here resembles um, is an example of the tr transparency. It stands for transparency. So what I could do now is I can get my eraser tool here and I can make the eraser a little bit bigger and I can erase the extra parts of the image that I don't want leaving only the buffalo and this is a very simple way of combining images using multiple layers and using transparency and that is to copy and paste or drag one image onto another onto a separate layer and then use the eraser tool to um, to erase away what it is you don't want and like I said this is kind of a this is the, the simplest and easiest way of learning transparency and learning layers in Photoshop. And so it has value. We're going to be learning about masks in some later videos and how to do masks and particularly layer masks. And those are really valuable and a little more advanced, but they're also a little more abstract and can be confusing when you're first learning Photoshop. So just having an image and then erasing, well, that's pretty easy. I want to notice, I want you to notice one thing here. I'm going to turn off the eyeball on this and I'm going to turn the eyeball on the background layer. Now the background layer, if I try to erase the background layer, it's locked right now. It will default to whatever the background color switch is. So this is a black color tab on the foreground color chip and this is a white on the background color chip. So if I erase on the background layer right now, it erases to white, right? And the reason for that is how come it doesn't erase to transparency? like the buffalo layer. And the reason for that is that the background layer is locked. 
so it erases to white. But if I was to unlock this background layer, double click on it, and then click OK, now the layer is unlocked. It's no longer called background. It's called layer zero. Now if I erase, the background layer will indeed erase to transparency. And so I'm, you know, I'm creating a hole in my image where it's going to be transparent. Well, this could be useful for especially like web applications or and there's a lot of reasons why you'd want to know how to do that. But um, right now I'm just going to go back in history. I'm going to click this history tool here and go back, 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 and now I'm back to where I started. I'll close that and turn on this layer and I'm ready to erase the rest of my um, erase the rest of this area around the buffalo so I can float him on a separate layer right on top of my background here image of Yellowstone. As I continue to ra erase around this image of the buffalo I want to point out a couple of tips for you and these are important tips. Um, you want to make sure which layer you're selected. So if, if, I'm, if I have this buffalo on top and I've got my eraser tool, but I've selected the background layer, what do you think is going to get erased? Not the buffalo, it's going to be what's underneath it, which is the background layer. For instance, let's pretend I don't realize that I've got the background layer selected, notice that, and I get my eraser tool and I start erasing and I think I'm erasing right here by the head of the buffalo, right? Right by the top of his head and I'm erasing and it's not working. Why isn't it working, right? Well, it is working if I turn off the eyeball, I've erased the background. Okay, so that's that's a big hassle. I'm going to control Z to undo. All right. Another thing, and this is a problem that a lot of students have. Um, sometimes you may have you may have have a selection that really causes you a problem. So I'm going to get this marquee selection tool, and I'm going to make a small selection here in the corner. See that little small selection right there in the corner? Okay. Well. If I've made a selection right there, that means I can only erase, if I decide I'm going to erase, in the area that's selected. I can't erase over here. I can only erase in the area that's selected. So I'll, I'll show you another example of that. I'm going to make a selection right here, right? Get my eraser tool. And you'll see I'll start erasing. And you'll see that it only erases where I have the selection, right? OK. Well, if you have a selection in the corner, right? And you're saying, I'm going to erase. And then you zoom in on the buffalo because you really want to do some fine detailed erasing. So I zoom in and then I get my eraser tool and I make it a smaller eraser using the bracket keys on my keyboard. And I want to do some erasing here. And I'm like, well, why isn't it erasing? And I'm trying to erase. It's not working. Well, it's because I've got this selection in the corner and I don't even realize that I have it. So you've got to do a select, deselect, or a control D, and then you'll be able to get in nice and close and get a small eraser and do some detailed erasing to really be able to cut that buffalo out of the scene so that you can use him as a character in whatever image you're making. And this might be a flyer or a birthday card or an advertisement for going to Yellowstone or something like that.